thank you for having me today. Hello, everyone. I started having and noticing my problem about three years ago. Um, early in 2017, I was just fatigued, run down, um, just, just felt terrible. I couldn't wait to, to get my next nap in, except when I took a nap, it didn't seem to help. It didn't feel like I slept. And at night, I'd be waking up five, six, seven times at night, um, not understanding what was going on. So I made an appointment with my uh, a family doctor, and I went to see, and I met with the nurse practitioner, and I told her my story, and I was telling her about how I was feeling and everything. And so she said, well, we're going to do two things. She said, first, I want to have you, we're going to do some blood work. I want to have you go to the hospital, and we're going to do some lab work on you. She said, then I'd like to take it one step further. She goes, I'd like to have you do a sleep study. Uh, she said, because I, I think there may be something there. So we did the lab work and, and that proved a thyroid problem, but that wasn't the total thing. So we scheduled the sleep study and I went through that. And um, after that, they uh, scheduled me with the local sleep doctor in my area. And uh, he told me that I had severe sleep apnea um, to the point where I was stopping breathing 52 times an hour. And uh, so he wanted to do another sleep study um, and fit me with the CPAP machine and see what the kind of adjustments they could make. So I underwent a second one. And um, then I met with him again and we, uh, I got a, a CPAP machine. So I thought I had the latest and greatest in the mask and all this good stuff. And, and, uh, but I, I just couldn't tolerate that. I struggled with it. Um, I, because I was moving and I still never felt rested. A couple hours in the night, I'd just take the thing off and throw it down. I, I, I couldn't tolerate it. And so, but I, Every night I put it on thinking this was going to help me sleep. So I, I need to get used to wearing this thing, but it just wouldn't work. And time went on and on and on. Well, finally, early last year, I was listening to a radio station and they talked about a product that helped with sleep apnea and you controlled it with a button and, and all of this stuff. And I thought, okay, what is this? And it was called Inspire. And you may have heard of Inspire. So I started doing a little homework on that and found a, uh, a doctor at Ohio State that dealt with Inspire. So I made an appointment with Dr. Chu and went to see him. And he immediately walked in that day and introduced himself and to his assistant and started up on a whiteboard and he wrote O-M-C. And he said, okay, he said, you have zero obstructive, zero you have four mixed, everything else is central sleep apnea. And I must have looked puzzled because he said, you look like you've never heard this before. And I said, I thought sleep apnea was sleep apnea. Oh no, he said, there's obstructive and there's central. And you have zero obstructive, you have all central. And he said, I can't help you. Inspire is for obstructive sleep apnea only. He said, however, the good news is I have a colleague at Ohio State that deals with central sleep apnea. And he said, I'm going to refer you to him. And so he instructed his assistant to forward all my information to Dr. Augustini. And I would, should wait till I hear from them. So I finally, a couple of weeks in, I got a call from them and they scheduled an appointment for me. So I went in and I met with Dr. Augustini's assistant. Um, she asked some questions. Did the, I don't know. She hooked me up with some wires. I don't understand all of that. But then she told me, she said that they would like to have a more recent sleep study because mine was a couple years old. And I said, that's fine. So I underwent another sleep study. Those results were then sent back to Dr. Augustini's office, and I met again with him. And she told me then, you are a candidate. She said, uh, for the remedy system. So I said, okay, so where do we go from here?
Well, we need to get some insurance information. We need to, you know, we need to run that by them. We need to get this approved and all, and all this good stuff. And of course, I had some questions about insurance and that, but Ohio State took care of handling all of that. So anyways, as time went on, they finally contacted me in December, told me that I was scheduled for an implant on January 9th. So on January 9th, I, I was the first one in the morning and uh, they did the implant and at four o'clock in the afternoon, I walked out of the hospital. Um, they had to keep me around a while because they had to schedule an x-ray to make sure that the wire hadn't moved, that the leads that they put in were still in place. And I went home and so then I had to wait four to six weeks, they told me, until I could come back and they would activate the device. So I was still undergoing my sleep apnea because uh, I just had this device in me that wasn't turned on yet. However, it was collecting data on how I was sleeping or how I was laying or the position I was in or what, you know, things like that. And that they could get all that information on. On February 24th, I was scheduled to come back into the office for an activation. So when I met with the uh, Dr. Augustini's assistant and two people from what, Respicardia were there and they helped do the activation. They do it for three settings, your left side, your back and your right side. And they set it for what you can tolerate at the time. And then there's a six week ramp up period where every week each one of those settings will increase just a few decimal points or whatever okay so i went home i had it activated couldn't wait to go to bed that night because i thought what is this going to be but i was apprehensive about what i would feel but i uh, had been hooked up with a, another patient ambassador who gave me some tips on maybe what to do first of all try to go to sleep before your activation period. Mine was come to come on 11 p.m. Go to sleep before that and see what happens. So I did, I went to sleep. Um, never felt it turn on. Uh, slept right through. Um, it, it was amazing the first night. Now, as I went from position to position, yes, you could feel it start back up again, but it was just something that you sink your breath with and you just it, you go back to sleep it's amazing how that works so anyways um i went through the six week period at about week four the right side setting was a little bit strong i told them i could not tolerate that it would it would kind of wake me up not that it hurt nothing ever hurt there was never any pain it was just a little bit stronger sensation when it when it did the breathing so i kind of avoided my right side so I went back in on May 15th and they adjusted the right side setting and toned it down, but increased it as after I was asleep so that it would ramp up again. They increased the back setting and the left side setting because they wanted to get a nice full breath of air. And um, so I went back home and it's worked great. I don't feel a thing unless I really, really focus on is this thing working, but it does, it works great. And so I'm to go back in six more weeks to see if there's any additional settings they need to ramp up or where we go from there. So that's pretty much my story. I don't know if any of you can you know, feel any of that, but that's my story. Thank you. Oh, that was great, thanks so much. You know, when we were talking yesterday, you had commented on and what is it meant? So you've tolerated it really well, but but what has the device kind of meant to you on a day to day basis? Well, on your one of your slide presentations, you had about a twelve month period in there where they start feeling better. And I can say I'm into this about three months now or so, maybe a little over, and I already feel better. Um, the there's a physical and a mental part to this and the mental part drags on you when you can't sleep okay the physical part also drags on you because you're not getting the proper rest so i can sleep now and i feel i feel better i can i do every well, i'm i'm an older gentleman so i i can't do everything that a younger person might do 
but I have the will to do it. Whereas before I didn't want to do it. I didn't even want to try it. So it, it's helped. Well, that's great. Um, before we open it up to questions, is there anything else you would want to tell somebody that's going through this process, um, trying to de trying to decide what therapy might be good for them? Well, I, I, you know, the, the, the amazing thing to me was to find out there were two separate kinds. Um, I do yeah. a lot of I ask a lot of questions. I do a lot of research. I went to the Respicardia website. I looked at every thing that was on there from people that had had the device. I, like I said, I was hooked up with a patient liaison um, out in Kansas City. He gave me some tips um, on some things. I, I, he was a patient ambassador. Uh, I had a patient liaison, Pam Evans from Respicardia, that I was in touch with, and she kind of kept me apprised of how things were. So it, it does, to do your homework, and uh, don't be afraid to ask questions, and uh, don't be afraid to take the next step. Thank you.